Yeah, of the lower end. Did you have a question? Okay. Any questions? Who feels like they understand this? Can I see thumbs up? Uh, can I get you? You have your thumbs up. What do you think? Can you summarize it for me? Me? Yeah. Um. So the. Summarize what? Just like. What? Are, what? Like, just give me your idea of what a colligative property is. It's like the, like the difference between like. Two. Like the difference between like how they both like boil. Like the, what's different about? Them. Yeah. It's what's different. It's this. So boiling point is a colligative property, yeah. and it changes depending on how much particles we have. Okay. I think we're going to talk about this and give us a few more examples, and I think this might make more sense. So, pure solutions or pure solvent, just one pure things. So this is boiling, and this one's just starting to boil. So it seems like this one did boil a little bit faster. So that's interesting. All right. We're going to take, once those both get boiling, we'll then take the temperature and we can see whether our hypothesis was correct. So the first one is vapor pressure lowering. And this one, if you understand this one, it's really going to help understanding the boiling point depression and, uh, or boiling point elevation and uh, freezing point depression. So vapor pressure is these particles that are in the gas phase right above a solution. So, we have liquid down here and vapor up here. And what happens is over here, we see that it's all solvent. So we're getting things moving in and air, out of air. There's, they're all in, like everything that's on contact with the surface is your pure solvent that can go into vapor pressure. And now over here, we have a mix. We have our pure solvent, the blue, and then these red particles that are a non-volatile solute. So, What's non-volatile mean? Or what is a volatile solution? Can anyone think of any examples, maybe? Well, let me change it. What comes to mind when you guys think of volatile? Fire. Fire? Anything else? So things that are kind of unstable, they're kind of, and so a non-volatile solution would be something that, um, so something that easily evaporates at room temperature. Um, so things like rubbing alcohol, actually, if you just leave like rubbing alcohol out on the table, you can actually see the vapor coming off of it. Has anyone ever witnessed this kind of idea? I see one person. It'll happen with like nail polish remover and stuff like that too. You can, you can see these fumes kind of come up and it's the vapor pressure and these are volatile. So they're, they evaporate more easily than water. So if we were to put in these, they're not going to change anything. They're going to change things but in a different way. These things don't go into the gas phase. So now what we have is over here we have a bunch of particles in contact with the surface. Over here, well we have less because now some of these other molecules are on the surface too and they can't go into the gas phase. So we're going to have less offered opportunities for our molecules to go into the gas phase. So what we can see in the air is that we have more particles over here than over here. So that is our definition. A non-volatile solute added to a liquid will decrease the vapor pressure above the solution. Is that making sense at all? Yeah. So is that kind of like what we're doing right now then? Yeah, because right now we have vapor pressure right above here. We can kind of see it coming off. And boiling happens when the vapor pressure of our solution equals the vapor pressure of our atmosphere. So at that point, then we get boiling like we see. So that's why vapor pressure and the boiling point are very dependent. So now that we have these two solutions, and they're both boiling, 
We can take the temperature. And I'm not sure if the timing really works out because of the... So one of the things, right, in science, when we're doing an experiment, we want to reduce the variables. And probably using two different hot plates that heat at different temperatures and rates wouldn't be the best. And if we were to do this, we would probably want to do it on the same hot plate and measure that and monitor that. But that's okay. So we're going to take the temperature of these. And on this one, it looks like, and this is the salt one. It looks like I am getting a boiling point of 93. So you might want to write down that on your sheet right under the results. And then we can do pure water. And this one, I'm only getting 89. 89 to 90. Now, Mr. Gardner, yeah. let me ask a question. I thought water boiled at 100 degrees Celsius, not yeah. 89 degrees Celsius. So you're right. So why why are you getting a number that's lower than what it should be? So we have a couple things probably going on here. One, we're at elevation. And I don't know if you guys have talked about this, but um, elevation detects boiling points. So if I'm boiling something at Everest versus sea level, it's going to lower at a lower temperature on Everest. And why? Because the pressure outside of us, right? Boiling point is the vapor pressure when the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. As we go up in elevation, the atmospheric pressure decreases. And this, so, it doesn't take as much heat to get that vapor pressure up. Whereas, if we're at sea level and it has a lower one, yeah. And the second reason it probably isn't is because these thermometers are probably running a little low. So they might not be calibrated or whatever. So that also affects uh, measurement. But since we use the same one, we can say relative to one, one is higher temperature than the other. We might not be able to say the absolute temperature of these, but that's so, what did we find? What was the result of this experiment? It raises, what? You just got it, it raises? Well, what was the boiling point of the one with the salt? 93. And the pure water? Okay, so definitely, raises the boiling point. So that's an example of a colligative property, which we're going to talk about next. And it has to do with this vapor pressure. So boiling point elevation. Yeah. Vapor pressure lowering. Like, oh, sorry, no, a non, a non vapor solution. A non volatile solution. There's a lot of things. A lot of them are like organic liquids. So um, alcohols. A lot of um, like rubbing alcohol is one. Um, even ethanol, which is like the drinking alcohol. Uh, things like ether, gasoline. gasoline. And you can really like gasoline. You can see the fumes coming up. Yeah. What makes something non volatile? It just means it has a really like low boiling. So like ether, I've used a lot in the lab, and it's a liquid at room temperature, but it boils at like 60 degrees Celsius or something. So if I leave it out, you, I mean, you can just watch it evaporate. And if you let it sit there for a day, it's all gonna evaporate compared to water, which probably would take more longer times. So it's anything that evaporates at room temperature. It's like pretty much, yeah. yeah? So we measured them at 93 and 89 degrees. If you kept them on the heater, would they get hotter? Is that as hot as it going to get? Like, 
Yeah. 